Welcome to another episode of the Geo Show. We got a killer episode this week. Went out to Regis Seven Mile Steakhouse and interviewed just a bunch of Husker legends: Joe Baja, John Havocos, Dan Steiner, Cole Pinzik, Dan Pinzik, um, and Calvin Jones. And it was just all it was a fantastic episode. Great time hanging out at Regis. So we're gonna roll those interviews, and uh, Brandon Axman joined me as well. So it was a good time. We'll roll through the interviews here, and uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode. Hey, Brandon Axman with me. We're out here at Regis Seven Mile Steakhouse. Very pleased. We have a bunch of Husker fan, or Husker players, former Husker players here, and very excited. We got Calvin Jones here, and you're, you're out here for your first time. So you can you talk a little bit about your experience being here by Columbus, Nebraska, out at, out at Regis. Well, out at uh, the restaurant is awesome. Uh, I've been told by several former Huskers a little bit about the history, the wall, signing the wall, and whatnot. But we have done a tremendous amount of work over the last three or four years here in Columbus. It's always a staunch supporter of Husker Athletics, so uh, Columbus is one of those towns that you enjoy coming to and appreciate those fans that uh, root for you even though they might not be in Memorial Stadium. And uh, you're out here to sign the wall, so very exciting, and uh, we'll get a little video of that later too, so excited to see how that goes, goes down. But do you have maybe a favorite story, I guess, uh, from being around here in Columbus, or anything crazy that's happened since you've been around in the area? Well, we, uh, we held a uh, barbecue contest here in the community last year, and then we bought, <clears throat> and a golf tournament, but we bought four national champions from the 95 team. And one of those was Dwayne Harris. And I don't believe he slept that night. And we teed off about 8 in the morning. Yeah. And it was about 30 degrees. Oh, <laughs> so pretty great. Did you go so, for it right at least? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a bunch of fun, a lot of former Huskers. But, again, we came because we wanted to celebrate that uh, 95 championship team with the community. So a lot of the community came out and actually watched the Miami game. But I think that was a real foundation yeah. that propelled the 94, 95, and also the 97 team. Mm -hmm. It was just something about that recruiting class. Uh, myself, a lot of the pipeline guys, Eric, uh, not Eric, but Zach yeah. Wieger, Brendan Side, those guys. So it was just getting over that hump because so many years we would go down to Miami and we'd be so close. Yeah. And, you know, coach and team in Nebraska we just needed that little push and so really if you talk to a lot of the guys on 94 and 95 they will tell you how significant that 93 team was. And obviously 94 and 95 the glory days of mm -hmm. Nebraska um, they had that 97 split championship with Michigan but we've been in sort of a flux for 15 some odd years now we have coach Mike Riley coming in what do you think has been the reason for that that we've Nebraska's dropped off a little bit under some of the coaching changes and what do we need to do to get back to those glory years of the mid 90s? Well I think the biggest thing is our, the expectations. I know when I went to Nebraska I committed uh, you know we were losing one game at the time and I mean you know you thought we lost five yeah. or six games <laughs> and so I think uh, the biggest thing is Husker Nation has to realize you know, Tom Osborne is a once-in-a-lifetime coach. And when you start trying to get that same person over, there's only one Tom Osborne. And I think our expectations got us in trouble uh, with, the, with the next coach, uh, my position coach, Frank Solich. You know, I'm in agreement with a lot of folks. You know, how do you let a 9-3 and three coach go? And then, of course, the next coach, uh, it was just really tough. Um, for former players and for Husker Nation to really get on board what they were doing. And so it was really a split. And, uh, you know, and I'll say it out loud. Yeah, I, I was a Polini guy. Yeah. Uh, I still am. Uh, you know, I, I wish him well and I hope he does well because I know how tough and how difficult it is to work with 18 and 19 year old young men today. And so I believe you should, they should get a butt, uh, kick in the butt just for waking up in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so you know, Nebraska has always and always will be a tough place to coach and play. When you look at uh, kind of the interested in expanding on that, you look at the expectation they have for coaches and how quick you, they expect you to be successful. Do you think that's just too quick of a time span? I guess just to expand on what you're saying, or do you think they need to give coaches a little bit more room to maybe find that long-term success? Well, I, I don't think there's. Even the NFL, I don't think sports in general, you're going to get that leisure, that luxury. Uh, you know, I think a coach normally is going to have three or four years. Uh, Nebraska, for us, 
uh, you know, we were we were consistent with that 9-3. So, you know, it was okay because that was what a lot of the other teams around the nation. But the biggest problem uh, I think we have, and I think it goes all the way back to Coach Osborne, is recruiting. You know, kids can go 50 miles from home down in Louisiana, Texas, and they're on TV. So recruiting is really the name of the game in college football, if you ask me. And when you have to compete with Jim Harbaugh and you have to compete against Urban Meyer, you have got to be getting in those five-star athletes' homes and being able to talk to them. So, you know, what do I expect this coaching staff to do? Um, really and honestly, I hope they can get up over the hump as far as recruiting because that has been the issue with the last three or four coaches. Well, 20-plus years we've been in this rut. It's all been about recruiting. Well, and expanding on that, the big news in Husker Nation is Keyshawn Johnson Jr. committed four-star athlete. So expanding on that, I guess, what was your assessment assessment of Coach Riley in his first year? And then you're obviously seeing some big recruits coming in, at least with Johnson. And how do you feel the Nebraska team's moving forward? Well, I think, I think they had a good recruiting plan. I think they can build upon that. Now, me personally, I've never gotten into recruiting just because I know come August, you come from high school, you got to strap it up, mm -hmm. and it's big boy football. Yeah. And some guys never just never get over the hump because as an athlete, there's, either you're going to go forward or you're going to go backwards. There is no medium. And so, you know, we've had five stars from previous coaching staff. And I'm like, five stars? Oh, okay. I was a kid in, that was in class B and C in Nebraska yeah. that could have played. Yeah. But I think, uh, you know, I think we we just have to, uh, we can't be patient. Uh, we're not going to be patient. Uh, I think this year is more about his system. Uh, I got on board after during the bowl period. Uh, I, I, I just could see some things that were happening internally with the team. And that comes from the leadership. Uh, and that goes right along with recruiting. We have to have somebody that's a leader on both sides of the ball. And so, you know, I know Coach Riley and those guys are doing their due diligence, working hard like all the previous coaching staffs. But those guys that strap it up, they've got to go out there. They have to carry themselves a certain way. And you know what? Again, it is a tough place to play and coach. And it's no different. I went to school 20 years after Johnny. I mean, and they were still holding our feet to the fire. Yeah. So, you know, that's what makes up Husker Nation. Well, Calvin, hey, I appreciate you sitting hey, down and nice talking, talking with to you guys. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We're glad to have you out here. We're glad to have you guys watching us as well. Yeah. For Brandon Axman and Calvin, we will be right back with more of the Geo Show right after this. Calvin's got to get the side of the wall here soon. So we're going to go do that, and we will be back in a little bit. Welcome out here to the Geo Show here on News Channel, Nebraska and Columbus News Team. We're out here at Regis Seven Mile Steakhouse and we're doing a bunch of interviews with former Husker players. We got the Pinzik family here today. So uh, I guess coming out here and seeing Calvin Jones first stop coming to sign the wall, I know that's got to be pretty cool to see him finally come out and do this for the first time. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that experience? Yeah, we, uh, you know, Reg got that wall painted up and uh, we watched it in the process probably three, four, five months, I suppose. Yeah. And when we finally saw the unveiling and how he put it together, Dylan, uh, the guy that did it, he, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a deal. And uh, to see it up there in Nebraska, it's, it doesn't surprise you in Nebraska to see a wall like that. Yeah. But it's really cool. Cool. And I got to ask you, too. Uh, we did, like I said, we did some football camps. Talk a little bit. It's been a while since I've yeah, seen you. Yeah. and uh, But since then, you've gone through your whole Nebraska career. Um, going through that, uh, how big of an influence was your father going through that Husker program to you aspiring to go there and then eventually being very successful there? Well, you know, I mean, growing up, Nebraska kid, dad playing, it was kind of a no-brainer to really go there, especially once Bo got in and he's like, yeah, that's that's where I want to go. And, uh, he come to practice quite often. Uh, towards the <laughs> senior year, uh, he was pretty much well known throughout the facility. Yeah. Um, Bo thought that he should have had a picture up his seat my yeah. senior year at our senior banquet. But uh, no, I, uh, you know, 
he gave me space when it was needed, and you know, every now and then he gave his little few pointers. But uh, I kind of talked to him pretty much every day, and see him at practice and whatnot. And he was a defensive guy, so he yeah. didn't quite understand the the, the smart side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was an offensive guy myself, yeah. so I liked it too. Well, a little bit removed now from your playing time with Coach Bo. Obviously, something you've made public. You're a, a big supporter of Bo. What were just your thoughts? I want to get both ears, but we'll start with the younger one first. Um, how Nebraska was in its first year with Coach Mike Riley. Do you feel the program's going in the right direction? Do you like what you see? Or, I guess, your thoughts as Nebraska moves forward with the football season? Well, as, uh, like you said, uh, I was a big Bo supporter. Still love him. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm excited to where it's going. Uh, the recruiting that uh, has been done this off season and even you know to next year and even a couple years down the road of what Riley and his staff is showing. Um, talking to the guys that I still know, you know they love they love that they love the old co coaching staff, but they still they like the new staff too. It's different, um, but uh, no, I think you're going in the right direction and the new D line, you know, hire Barella. I think it was a great hire. I think. Uh, for once, maybe the black shirts may be back in the D line area. You'd like to follow that up? Yeah, you know, just watching what's happened. You know, of course, last year they didn't win as many games as we all would like. But I think it's a step forward. I mean, uh, Hyatt Perella was huge in my book. And then they switched the guy to take on the Nebraska recruiting and got an ex Nebraska player to do it. And, uh, and I just think that they're slowly but surely making the right moves, and uh, it's a process, and you just got to buy in. And you know, we all love Nebraska football, so really, whoever's at the helm, we're all watching. And you were there for that whole change uh, with the Big 12, Big 10, correct? When that correct. whole process went through, and uh, I mean, what was that like for you? Was it weird switching conferences and going to the Big 10? Did you see much of a change? I know you get used to playing the same teams every year. Was it all different for you? Uh, my first two years, I was Big 12, and the last three. I was Big Ten, and I guess I got to play a few times. Uh, my been my redshirt freshman year against some Big Twelve teams. Uh, just growing up, knowing the Big Twelve, you know, hearing about the Big Eight, Oklahoma, Nebraska rival. Uh, you know, you hear those stories, and you always wanted to be a part of that. And that was a bummer not being able to, you know, be a part of that. And you know, the travel is so being so close in the Big Twelve compared to Big Ten, but uh, you know. I love playing in the Big Ten. Uh, the rivals that we that I have towards some of the Big Ten schools probably compare to what he has towards the Big Eight. But uh, no, the play was completely different. Uh, Big Ten is more smash mouth football, whereas Big Twelve is a little more kind of high fly, speed, quickness. And from your perspective, you know, playing in the Big 12 and then watching this Big 10 football um, and watching your son play majority Big 10 football, what was that like for you to see that difference? Well, you know, I always wanted him to get a chance to play against Oklahoma at in Norman. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> You know, that was like everything, that was everything in my days. Yeah. But to uh, go and watch him play Pete Michigan in the big house, there was nothing better. That day, I'll never forget that day. And, uh, you know, we got, the, we won at Michigan State, and uh, we didn't get Ohio State at Ohio State, but we beat them here. But just, and going to Penn State, we beat Penn State twice out there. And, you know, those are all big legend schools. You know, yeah. if you didn't grow up knowing those teams, and to go in their house and win, that was, I would say the Michigan win was probably beating them in their own place because it shot up 100,000 people that day. Oh, yeah. I loved every minute of it. When I walked out, I was ready. I didn't care who it was. I was going to take them out, you yeah. know. But we had fun. We uh, we didn't miss any games. And uh, getting this, they got a chance to see a lot of stadiums and big, you know, big, big time stadiums. Oh, and you guys look at that Michigan State win this year. And I know anybody, even if you weren't a Husker fan, that was an intense game to watch come down to the wire. And whether or not you count that last pass, there at the end it, it, on the scorebook when they look back it's going to be a W. It, it was a pretty emotional for you guys too looking back and and obviously for you not being able to play that college football anymore it's a little more emotional because you're fresh out to not playing with the Huskers so is that a pretty intense game to watch? It uh, Yeah it was intense actually uh, two of my former roommates CJ Zimmer and Brandon Chappick we were on the sideline for that game and then Jay Mitch uh, was also on the uh, sideline that game, so I mean it was uh, all game. I mean we were in two, and, you know, giving each other crap throughout the yeah. game, and you know, talking about you know, old times and, and 
know, Ohio State when we came back and beat them at home, Wisconsin, um, stuff like that. And then uh, me and my roommates, we didn't go. We got on the field afterwards and celebrated a little bit, but we didn't do nearly what yeah. Josh Mitchell did with the video running through, you know, midfield yeah. with current players and all that. Yeah. We didn't do that. Yeah, but still good to celebrate though. I was talking about the recruiting scene and how much it's changed and trying to get Nebraska to back to where it was. Um, and the big thing is how do you get those four and five star recruits to Nebraska when you have the Florida schools and the Texas schools with those close vicinities? And we have a good news with Keyshawn Johnson signing on this past week, but how do you keep that momentum going from your perspective as a player and seeing the recruiting process the past four years when you played? What do you think that's going to take to get Nebraska to bring in those players to get us back to the top? Well, you know, I think uh, Nebraska, I mean, even when I was getting recruited, uh, the facilities, I mean, state of the art. I mean, I don't think you can go find another, you know, they may have one or two things, but we got some pretty good facilities. Um, that's one thing, you know, and then just the culture, you know, you got to bring in kids that buy into that culture. And, uh, you know, it's obviously we're going in our second year with uh, Riley and his culture. And, uh, coming from the West Coast, you know, I think that's going to be able to provide a little more kind of background and getting some of those guys out West, East, um, some of them higher ranked guys. Like to add? Well, they, I guess with all that said, next thing they got to do is start winning. Yeah. And winning brings in a lot of things. And, uh, you know, they can't afford to have another subpar season. And uh, I don't think it'll happen. And, uh, I, you know, just like yesterday, I read that uh, that big four-star quarterback was in town with that Keyshawn Johnson. And, and, you know, if that starts happening, it takes one or two key recruits and it just it blossoms from there. And, and now it's just a matter of those coaches taking these kids and buying into their system and, uh, and kind of take on the Nebraska tradition and get things going. Well, I know you guys known each other since a while back, all from late, or Brandon from Lincoln. Do you have any good stories about Brandon that you can share with us? Anything, uh, anything interesting that you can give us? Oh, geez, that's going back a few Ooh. years now, man. It's, I don't know if I have any. I have one that I remember because it vividly sticks out in my mind in the locker room. I think you were a freshman, or were you a <laughs> sophomore when I was a senior? Yeah, I would have been a sophomore when I was a senior. I want. I don't know why, but I feel like. It was maybe a birthday beat down or you were trying to <laughs> join in with the gang and take me down for whatever reason and I held you down for at least three seconds <laughs> before you clobbered me to a pole. But maybe 150 pounds, like that still sticks into my mind. It's like I held down Cole Pengsick uh, for three seconds before he decided to kill me a little bit. And I, before he decided to get rid of you. Before he decided to get rid of me. So those three seconds though meant a lot. And knowing obviously you went on to play for the Huskers and everything and you're starting varsity as a freshman, you're going to be a pretty good football player. So even though I was a senior, I still thought that was a notch in my cap. So. It makes for a good icebreaker at parties. So. Obviously yeah, didn't really so. have much effect on him, but <laughs> stuck out in my mind. So. Well, Penzik family, I appreciate you guys sitting down with us talking a little Husker football and catching up. Uh, have a good rest of the night. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. Thank you, guys. We will be right back after this for more of the GO Show, a new channel, Nebraska and Columbus. News team see you a little bit. So Dan is my former coach, so we'll get back, we'll get to you in a little bit, Dan. But John, I gotta say, offensive lineman. Yep. That's probably one of the craziest groups when you go through college. The old, the old linemen are kind of the wildest group of guys to work with. And so, do you have any good stories of maybe anything that's, I guess, worthy of being on TV that's still safe for TV? I know it's uh, a no. while, but do you got any good stories for us? <laughs> no, no. no Can you think of any good stories I could tell? You know, th this is on the field, but little known fact. You know when they ask those guard around questions? Yeah. Who did it first and who did it? <laughs> Nobody knows, but John Havacost ran the guard around. I was the, the first around. one to run the guard around. Oh, we, really? When we yeah. played Oklahoma, Randy Schleusner scored on it. Yeah. yeah. But earlier in the game, John ran it from the left side around my side. And my guy, when I blocked down, ran the other way. And they gave it to John, and he was wide open. And our, D, our wide receiver couldn't handle this block, which is hard for that long. Yeah. But he gained 19 Tim Smith yards. Never, yeah, Tim yeah. Smith never blocked anybody. He stood there. <laughs> he stood there. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about it is, is I told 
Smitty, I said, you know, I said, all those games I blocked for you, you know, when you were going down taking passes, I said, one time you had to block for me and you just sat there and watched. And that's all he did. Just stood, stood there and watched. So I said, that's the best you could do. He would have probably scored from like 60 yards out. Yeah. But you got to take, uh, you got to show off that speed a little bit. When you're coming from the O line, you get that guard around, you get out in the open, you got to show off the legs a little bit, too. And you know, unfortunately, you're talking to the right guy because yeah. he, he was pretty run, fast. He could run 4 7. Yeah. So there was uh, two guys, uh, Steve Linquist and myself, that were on the kickoff team. And the kickoff team is strictly a defensive side of the ball. Yeah. So uh, there was two of us up until that point that were on the offensive side that got to play on the kickoff team. It was me and him. That just didn't happen because no. they were big and fast. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, talking about the guard around being an on-field experience, I mean, do you have something that still sticks in your mind? I know for me, when I look back, and I'm only a couple years out of football, a lot of the games blend together, and it's just a few moments that kind of stick out for me. Is there like that one moment that you remember going back that's kind of a favorite of, of playing on the field, playing college ball? Well, we were 10-0 and to start off, yeah. with, and we lost two 14-17 to 17 games, and so that was really disappointing for us. But I had to fortunate experience of blocking uh, Rulon Jones. R Rulon Jones was the six foot seven, eight, 270 pounder back then, which yeah, was big. Yeah. And before the season, he had came into Lincoln on a on an airport stop, yeah. and he got in trouble with the police at the airport. He broke, bug, put his fist through a window. Yeah. And and I I knew I was going to block this guy yeah. to start the season, you know. And so he came in, and we played Utah State, and yeah. and so I'm I'm kind of scared to death, but I end up doing a good job. He's tall and skinny, and so I stayed low on him. And yeah. He couldn't handle that. Yeah. But he ended up like four years later being the number one. Highest I played paid. with yeah. him. I played with him in Denver. Yeah, and he was the yeah. highest paid yeah. NFL defender, and he like was, 875 thousand at the time so for Denver. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, when we're coming up here on NFL draft and everything, can you talk a little bit about your experience back in the day of, of making that making that transition? Is it? You know, I mean, what was that like back in the day? I mean, now it's pretty publicized, pretty media. Everything is on TV, so you don't miss anything. You talk about your experience doing that. It's completely different back then what it was today. You know. When we went to UNL, you know, it was big in Nebraska. And it's a big step up going from high school to college, but it's even a bigger step going from college to the NFL. And when you go to the NFL, everybody's good. Everybody's there because they're good. So it isn't like you're going in there and you have a leg up because you're that much better than the next guy. It, it's A lot of it's luck and being with the right team at the right time. So. And just going along those lines, besides the luck and being with the right team, the right um, philosophy, I guess you'd say, coaching-wise, pro, is it how do you separate yourself or how do those players separate themselves from the, to be the best when there's all that talent that's the, all right about the top? We had uh, two weeks of, of uh, rookie ball where all the uh, draftees and free agents come in and they practice. And then the first day that the vets all came in, and the very first practice of the very first day the vets were there, I got in a fight with a vet. So it was me and him going at it. And afterwards, you know, nobody gets hurt because you're in your helmet and pads and everything, you know. And after they pull us aside, Red Miller was our coach for Denver. He comes up to me, he says, kid, he says, I like your spunk. He says, he says, you proved something to me today just by sticking up for yourself. He says, keep it up. And it's just little things like that, that that the head coach sees in you. And whether he keeps you or another kid, it's sticking out maybe that one time that he goes, you know, let's keep that kid around and not that kid. So, like I said, it's just little things and a lot of luck. And looking back on your pro and college ball, which would you say sticks out memory-wise? Which one do you look more fondly on? Can you decipher between the two? Oh, definitely. Uh, the guys I made friends, you know, when you go to the NFL, it's a job. And everybody goes their separate ways. But when you're in college, these guys have been my friends ever since we've been in college together. And we still do things together. Uh, I don't do anything with the guys I played with in the NFL. Uh, it, it's, it's more of a, almost like a brotherhood when you're in college. We, uh, us two and Pensix, we flew out to, to Vegas and Cole. 
practice last fall and yeah. and watched uh, the UNLV play. Oh, and Barney yeah. Cotton's their offensive coordinator. He played with. He was our yeah. age, and yeah. so we had, we spent three days out there. And, just a blast. Good to catch up. It was. Yeah. You really don't form, form a tighter bond, I don't think, with anybody than the guys that you're sitting in, because you're sitting in those meetings every day, you're watching film together, it's 4.35 in the morning and you're doing conditioning during the winter, and um, it's just kind of an unreal bond, you don't really get a match anywhere else, so that's, um, it's pretty crazy. I know looking at the team today, we got Mike Riley going in his second year, Dan, I'll start with you. Um, it was a, it was kind of a rough season for Husker fans, and Husker fans are not well, are not afraid to let you know how their feelings on uh, how the season goes. But what do you see the outcome and the outlook for Husker football moving forward here in the second year? Well, you know, I, I was probably one of the antis at the whole time. You know, I I wasn't a big fan of hiring somebody that hadn't won. You know, and I don't know about John, but when you played down there, you like Nebraska ties. You know, but I, I saw a lot of good things last year. A lot of things that you know I don't want to see again, but I think he's done a good job recruiting. The kids, you don't hear the kids say bad words, you know, and, and so and about anything that's going on. So that that might means a lot, you know, when when they're out there and they're positive, when you change staffs, that's that's a good thing, you know. And I think they were positive with Bo, the kids, but they're still positive here, so that's that's good. John, were you a Bo guy? Are you a Riley guy? Is is there? I mean, what's what's your thoughts on the whole situation uh, as we go into the second year? I like Bo. You yeah. know, I got to know Bo because Barney was down there, and I was good friends with Barney. So, uh, you know, I like Bo. I, I know why they got rid of him. You know, uh, Riley. You know, I think you got to give the guy a chance. You know, he's gonna go in there and and. He's going to do things his way, which maybe isn't the way we were taught, but uh, we were coached by what, and I'm very biased, but I think the best football coach ever. You know, Tom Osborne was probably one of the best coaches that I could have played for. And so when we try to compare people, we're comparing them to one of the greatest coaches that ever lived. And it's like, how do you, you know, how do you go about comparing somebody to that? So I say, everybody, you know, relax, take a deep breath, give Riley a chance, see what he can do, and hopefully he can build some teams and get some things that we're used to winning. Yeah. And and we can all take a deep breath and say, it's back to Nebraska football. I have a quick story that yeah. you might be like about I, I always like me, and, story, me and Mr. So. Pensick. I was the starting left tackle in the spring, and he was the oh, one defense. of the starting yeah, defensive yeah. guys. And and we ran 49 sweep, and I did my fire out low, and then crab block him, and yeah. I got him driving him off the ball, and he, he's going back, and the guy's running for yards, and pretty soon my head is stuffed onto the ground, and my body, I'm still moving my feet, and he's got my head pushed into the ground. Yeah. Pretty soon I reach up with my hand, the whistle's blown, I reach up and I swat his arm, and all of a sudden I look up, and Coach Osborne's going, Steiner, don't you ever, and I said, but he, and he said, Doof. and I looked, and I went, and I just melted, and I looked back there, and there's Pensick, <laughs> just laughing and laughing. When you look back at uh, Coach Osborne too, and I'm always interested because there's that different. You got people they call players coaches, and then you got very any more managerial coaches. It seems like it's one of those two, uh, one of those two classifications. To you guys, what what did you see Osborne more as, as as the players coach, or more as the managerial style, kind of behind the scenes? He was a business coach. Yeah. You know, he was a great guy, but. It was all doing your job, you know. We tried to be better than everybody else mentally and, and, and do our job and not make mistakes. And he said, you know, he, he didn't give you the raw, raw, except a few times. And when he did, you just fly. But, you know, when he, when he taught you, you, you knew it and it, it usually worked. He was CEO. Yeah, you know, exactly. He, he was a big picture guy. And he was one that could always see a lot of different things happening before they happened. And, you know, Coach Fisher and Coach Tenniper were our coaches, and they were great coaches. And he wasn't about to step in and tell those guys how to coach us. He let them do it. And But, like I said, he was the CEO, so he was kind of responsible for all of them. So, like I said, great coach, but he left everybody do their jobs. And if they didn't do them, guess what? You're out the door, and he found somebody that would do the job. Well, John, Dan, I appreciate you guys joining us out here and talking a little Husker football and reminiscing on the past. It's a pleasure to have you guys out here. So. Hey, there's, he can tell you that this is the greatest stuff we do yet. Yeah. After 36 years of being out, you know, you, you just love a chance to gab a little bit. So.
Appreciate it, guys. It was fun. Awesome. Brandon Thank with us, much. Dan. Thank you, John. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank we will be right back after this with more of the Geo Show here on New Channel Nebraska Columbus News Team. We'll be back in Welcome back to the Geo Show here on News Channel Nebraska and Columbus News Team. I got one of the many local legends from around the area, from the Husker football era, and uh, Joe Blaha. And Joe, thank you for joining me out here today. How are you doing today? Not a problem. So I enjoy, I enjoy coming back to town. And nothing like coming out here to Regis. Huh? This is a good spot to be, huh? You bet. Good food. Well, looking back, and, and do you stay up to date pretty much with Husker ball and everything right now? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Looking at uh, this last season and looking at Mike Riley here, and he's coming into his second year, do you got any predictions? Well, how do you like how he's working, and do you like everything that's going along with the program right now? They're doing a fantastic job. You know, the coaches are really, you know, they're, they're a great bunch of guys. I've had an opportunity to meet them several times, and I'm very impressed with them. I got to ask you, when uh, when you're talking about college football, when that college football season comes around, I know uh, my first couple years out there, every time fall came around, it hit me a little harder that I missed playing the game. What's, what's it like? Is it still the same every time you come around every year? Do you miss playing the game more and more as the years go by? You never you never stop loving the game. You know, I, I, I loved it. And I went on and played a number of uh, professional years. and So, yeah, it, it gets into your blood. You know, you, you miss it. I gotta ask you too. Do you have a uh, a favorite Husker story? I know when college football goes around in the teams, uh, there's a lot of wild stuff that goes on. I played too, and so I know you you probably can't share all your stories, but do you have maybe a favorite story back from your playing days, pro or college, uh, that you can share with me? Uh, when when I was a uh, a junior, uh, I mean I just always thought you know we'd be going on our away games, our way you know trips, and you know one of my best friends was Dick Rupert. He was a guard. Yeah, and I was just, we're going to lose tonight. <laughs> he was, Joe, you have to be more positive, you know. And, you know, I'd have a good game. You know, we, we were just, we were a good team and just solid up and down the line. Well, I got to say, there's always a lot of stuff that goes on in the field, too, and I know it was always interesting interacting with players between plays. Some players, obviously, rival teams. It's a little more intense. Some guys, you know, it's, it's a little friendly, but it's still pretty competitive. Is there anything crazy that ever happened on the field to you? Uh, I mean, there was a couple times, you know. Uh, Mike Montgomery was a uh, receiver for Kansas State mm -hmm. the day that we we beat him, and I had all yeah. my interceptions. And you know, Lynn Dickey, who was their quarterback, turned out to be my teammate down at Houston. Yeah. He had a deep baritone voice. You know, just okay, and of course, we used to ride each other. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I, and I got to ask you too. Just talking strictly college football, uh, you know, you come away with the national championship. And um, was there ever a feeling, I guess, that topped, or can you describe that feeling when you guys finally got that ring? Is there anything that ever topped that emotion? Not really. I mean, it's just, you know, the game was, you know, at the end of the game, you know, when the game was coming to an end, you know, I just the elation of, you know, knowing what you did. Just everything just kind of builds up at that moment, huh? It was quite a rush, yeah. Hey, well, Joe, uh, I appreciate you coming out here to talk to me. Enjoy the rest of the night, and uh, I guess you're getting ready to head out of here, but enjoy the wings and everything, and have a good night. I had a great time. Thank right. you very much. Appreciate it, Joe. All right, we'll be back with more Husker guys right after this here on the Geo Show. I'm Grant Otten. This is Joe Blaha. Joe, thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys after this. Well, that was our episode, guys. Thank you for tuning in again, and thank you to Regis Seven Miles Steakhouse. Wednesday evening, had a blast hanging out with all those guys and catching up on some good old stories, Husker football and everything that going on out there. That wall is very cool, so if you get a chance, go check it out yourself. Uh, I know I had a blast, and we can't wait to go back out there. So for everybody else, Brandon Axment and all those guys, former Husker legends, we'll see you next time. This is the Geo Show. I'm Grant.